Awaken Beauties, finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through a healthy mind and inner biology. I am your hostess, Cassandra Keel, a 20-year salon owner, organic beauty product formulator, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I am here to help you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by evokebeauty.com. E-V-O-Q-Beauty.com. Now, let's get to it. Welcome to the Awakened Beauty Podcast. This is Cassandra, your neuroenergetic ADHD coach, clinical hypnotherapist, and biofeedback practitioner. Alrighty, we're going to jump right into today's super informative but intense episode, and it's one that everyone must, must tap into. And especially over the last year and a half, you know, there's enough talk out there about how our body, our mind, our mental health in society is at such a critical mass. And just alone in the last year, opiate overdoses and abuse have gone up 43%. I've often talked about how women with ADHD have a one in four chance of committing suicide in their lifetime versus the one in 32 in neurotypical women category. So my point is, where does trauma come in to the roadmap? How can we start to tap into the most effective and cutting edge techniques from trauma therapies, neuroscience, functional medicine, and biohacking to really maximize and accelerate our results when we're trying to rewire these insecurities, stress, and states of overwhelm that are stored in the body. So that's the path we're going to take today. We're going to tap into Dr. Amy Apigen's trauma rewiring uh, research that is so profound and so needed and right at the right time. Now, this is especially what I'm working through with not only my group of coaching with women who, for instance, perhaps you just found out you have ADHD or un undiagnosed ADHD, but stretching even further, talking about VAST, which is Dr. Ned Hallowell's broader spectrum that involves different variables, such as having a highly sensitive nervous system where you are energetically attuned to everything around you. You're highly empathic. You're highly intuitive. So all of these different variables really come into play here when I structure around the conversation of trauma. And so I start with the question, who has stored trauma? Now, there's many different forms of stress. We know them as physical stress, internal biological stress, emotional stress, environmental stressors, psychological stress. Now, some stress becomes overwhelming, either because it's too much, too fast, or because it goes on for far too long and not enough support. And overwhelm happens as a shock to the body. And overwhelm is a different biological process than stress and causes lasting change in the mind and the body. So this is how overwhelm is a trauma to the body because the body doesn't bounce back to its prior state of health. Now, having stored trauma does not mean, my friends, that you necessarily were abused, that you were neglected or had a terrible upbringing or had terrible parents. Though for some, this really truly is the case. But it, it means there have been situations in your life that your body experienced as not having enough resources and support. It became so overwhelmed. And the best way to manage it was to ignore your natural needs, push through it, not caring, but working harder in order to feel the survival. And I think about a child 
especially an energetically child that can't take any more of the stress energy in its ecosystem that it's picking up, right? It doesn't have those prefrontal cortex and processing faculties. So literally a child, if burdening too much stress in its ecosystem will die if it doesn't protect itself. And Brett Baum's work is incredible about how the body goes off just from that 89% to 100%, it glitches in the body and it stores as a hologram in the body. So there's real science here, my friends. And everyone has experienced trauma. Everyone is living comprised to some degree. And their physical health and mental health become compromised from the lasting effects of trauma in our biology. So for a time, we can manage and we can cope. But there comes a breaking point for everyone. But even long before the breaking point, we're living a life that's compromised. So as we move through this, start to really tap into and become neutral. Don't allow this conversation to allow you to come into a trigger state if the best that you possibly can, but to just stay neutral and think about self-compassion and self-love as we venture through this. Because there's an answer. And the process of rewiring trauma patterns is actually fairly simple. Now, depending on the degree of compromise, how long the stressors are there and imbalances in the nervous system, it'll all depend on the degree of the health one can achieve and how fast we can get there. So the important point here is that there's so much more potential from which to live a full and thriving life once we tap into the solutions and the resources. So the next question is then, where does overwhelm get stored? Now, trauma gets stored in the body, specifically in the nervous system. Now, those that have ADHD, neurodiversity, sensitivities, empathic, very intuitive, it's really important to listen here. Because especially with ADHD, we have an interest-based nervous system, much like the hunter and farmer theory from Mr. Hartman, who basically shares the Edison gene, and that many with ADHD, he proclaims, have a hypervigilant nervous system. Therefore, they were great hunters. They were hyper-aware. So the nervous system includes that of the brain and the nerves that run out all to the body sensory systems. And it's responsible for carrying out all the signals in your brain to move through your muscles and to keep your heart beating. Now, while the nervous system affects all of the organs and systems in the body, the nervous system really holds the keys, my friends, to processing and rewiring of that, all of that overwhelm to arrive to a state of health full vitality, energetic coherence, where the meridians are in lock sync and the energy and the currency is moving fluidly. And perhaps a state that a person has never truly felt before ever in their life, depending on the time of stress and the overwhelm that began in the first place and accumulated in their body. So the nervous system is our survival system. It is our built-in survival programming that is designed to help keep us alive no matter what. It is foundational. Thus, it is predictable and absolutely understandable and very straightforward in its survival programming. Now, let's go over the three different states of the nervous system. This is really important. And I'm going to try to bring a visual into the show notes. But basically, if you can imagine from left to right, you have three different zones. On the left is the parasympathetic, right? The middle is going to be that calm awareness, the aliveness, the curiosity, you're connected to self. And on the far right, You're present, grounded, healthy, and secure. 
So from left to right, we can see that progression. Now on that graph, now imagine on top of that, in bright, bright red, we have a state of over-awareness. So on the bright red, top left, you have what is known as a threat, which moves into the sympathetic state of anxiety, which then moves over on the right of the graph that you're in this relentless, activated hypervigilance and can even move into anger and aggression. And it can feel like you're on a hamster wheel or that you have insomnia. Now let's dip down from that top hyper red state down to the middle, which is that calm parasympathetic state to the bottom where we get down into the deep, deep, deep gray. And from the left, what I have already mentioned is that too much, too fast and too little for too long, meaning too little support for too long. Now we then move into the middle of the graph, which is we start to tap into that dorsal vagal freeze, which is complete overwhelm. You can't move. You feel paralyzed to the right where you actually start to move into exhausted, into that lethargic, heavy, depressed feeling, that chronic pain. The body just wants to conserve energy. So at the top, you have wired and tired. And at the bottom, you have absolutely exhaustion. So really, this middle window is known as the social engagement system, which is our parasympathetic system. And that upper red zone and the lower gray zones are the two default survival states programmed into our nervous system. So if we really look at this verbal diagram or image that I explain, where do you think that you spend most of your time? Does your nervous system spend a lot of time in either sympathetic state or in the overwhelmed state? Now, next, the question is, how does overwhelm get stored? So if we look at modern society, we don't recognize stored stress and overwhelm and its effect on our biology or our thoughts or our emotions. We have expectations that we should be able to handle the things and just get over it. I mean, my goodness, not that long ago, depression wasn't even a real thing. And we would say, just get over it. Everything will be fine. If we look at ADHD, people still think that it's, that it's a, 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 let's just look at the, um, some people in the religious communities. They think that it's an excuse. You may even have friends or family that thinks it's an excuse, but where in which the naivete needs to be put to bed because MRIs show it on a brain scan. It is the most heritable trait in the humans. And it is an increase as we show as a tenfold in addictions, suicide, long-term stress, chronic illness, and cuts a life by 12 years, if not managed well. All of these things are real. And they affect the overwhelm in the nervous system. So we have these expectations on not only each other, but society to just get up and go. And even with kids, we use the phrase, you know, kids are resilient to suggest that they can just get through anything. However, it really truly does come at a cost, my friends. The cost is stored in overwhelm. And overwhelm gets stored by causing imbalances in our nervous system and that survival system. And the nervous system is attempting to compensate for the undischarged energy from that survival state having been triggered. So it will pop out in the most obvious ways, my friends. And this compensation results in imbalances over time that affects the health of an individual. And it can show up in a very reactive mode. And when we're in a more reactive mode, we're more prone to shutting down in a response to not wanting to feel that future stress that the body is going to predict from its past to inform its present.
So your survival system becomes overwhelmed by the situation. It does what it does best. It shuts down, becomes frozen, and you go flat in order to feel no intensity, no fear, and no discomfort. And by this means, it is just trying to survive. So next, let's just tap into what is the true cost? What's the cost of stored trauma? Now, I want us to think about all different factions of even in the entrepreneurial realm or in the business place, being a perfectionist. You know, a perfectionist has a more reactive nervous system that experiences more anxiety and fear. They have to maintain a very narrow window of perfectionism to try to manage their high anxiety. So if we look at a woman and her survival system that becomes frozen inside and results in someone feeling emotionally numb or flat, this is actually a survival response. It is called the dorsal vagal freeze response. And it shuts down to not feel the intensity of fear and discomfort by this means just trying to survive. So perfectionism actually is a sign of stress and trauma. And not only does that woman or that person feel shut down emotionally, but their body also shuts down. There can be many, many health effects due to this stored overwhelm and to societal okayness and acceptance of perfectionism. Now, the next question is, how do we bring health to an overwhelmed nervous system? Now, since it's stored in the nervous system, we have to work with the nervous system. And because the nervous system response is very predictable and program response, we reverse engineer the survival response to rewire the overwhelm pattern. So hang with me. So when we look at the mind and body where it's stored, we learn to train our mind to get out of the thoughts and the story, the narrative, and track the nervous system by understanding the different body sensations through somatic resonance. And we then can guide and sometimes just allow the nervous system to do what it needs to do to complete its response. Now, as a clinical hypnotherapist, I guide people into that brainwave state where the body is completely calm. We bring down the critical factor, which is basically your guard dog, and we allow the body to reinform itself. And it is not that we don't use our minds. We use our mind to bring attention and a focus on the process that is happening in the body. We allow the subconscious to get reinformed. And whether it's hypnotherapy or somatic therapy, we will experience aspects of all of these activations and releases of a survival cycle as the body is allowed then to respond to a threat, and then it relies itself to return to its place of safety with guidance from a professional. And we really have come to understand the different sensations of the nervous system states and how to shift ourselves back from that stress and overwhelm into a state of calm, flow, and vitality. There's many practices. I also use biofeedback through energetic resonance. So I just love though the most pronounced work is through somatic work and through mind management work and through being able to do a simple pause. It doesn't have to be difficult and allow ourselves to let that emotion, which takes 90 seconds to move through. Now, somatic work has developed further into now evidence-based trauma therapies, including the work from Dr. Peter Levine, um, Dr. Porges through polyvagal nervous system. And it's really probably the most profound science, evidence-based science that's out there in conjunction with functional medicine, hypnotherapy, subconscious, energetic work. All of these different aspects can work. What's right for the person is the key. And this is what excites me is that how can we really maximize and accelerate successful results for the person in need? 
And by that, I mean all of us, because we've all experienced trauma in our life. So when we can bridge these worlds of cutting edge approaches, of neuroscience, functional medicine, hypnotherapy, mind management, energetic work, we can really do the work, start to feel the feels and allow the nervous system to release that stored trauma. We are asking for it to rewire. And neuroplasticity, my friends, is the most unique ability of the nervous system to change and rewire. It can, it absolutely can rewire. And so how do we optimize this neuroplasticity? And I, from my research, I really truly believe we have to start to tap into the hologram of both our 3D body, as well as the hologram of the infinite around us and trauma that has maybe been passed down generational. Sometimes I find, and this is what I find in the personal development industry is sometimes you don't have anything else to go and fix, but you may be feeling something around you and you're maybe trying to go and fix societal trauma or your family's trauma, but it may not even be you. So it's really important to stay attuned to and to work with the energetics and the subconscious to really tap into what are we, what do we have here? Right? So we first have to address the health of that individual neuron in the cellular resonance in the body, where that mitochondria and inflammation and biochemical imbalances and stress hormones, that's the key. And without these optimized, a neuron will remain in a danger response. And so these need to be supported and optimized to be able to allow and optimize that neuroplasticity of the mind and body and energetic system to rewire itself. It will do it with the right guidance. So oftentimes, after we're able to start to tap into, and this is why I advocate for even individuals with ADHD to really step into where are their areas of trauma or subconscious and triggers in the body so that we can allow that already hypervigilant nervous system to start to relax and to really understand its genius and its gifts and its talents and start with a strengths-based approach as we start to tap into the body and the neuroplasticity and the different chemical and natural peptides in the nervous system to promote this neuroplasticity. You know, for example, brain-derived neurotropic factors, BDNF, is a peptide that promotes neuroplasticity. And things that increase BDNF include exercise, deep sleep, meditation, sunlight, even intermittent fasting. And you can boost that BDNF with the most potent methods, but without addressing all the components, your neurons will remain in that danger mode. You'll remain stuck. So really it's addressing these different pieces first and foremost, allowing the body to feel safe, then walking into optimizing how we want to reinvent ourselves and understand our true identity, our true nature. That's the next step out of trauma is who do you want to become versus trying to continue to fix yourself? Because once we get past this phase, we just start to work with the body as we shift and move into higher states of consciousness. And then we get to go and create what we love. And that love and that state of fulfillment and purpose helps feed back into the nervous system, rewire the energetics, and really come back into coherence as the full self. You're already whole but it's all of these little small rocks, bigger rocks and boulders that we just need to move out of the resistance in the body so it can heal and be optimized. So again, today was a roadmap. We talked about who has stored trauma, where does overwhelm get stored? How does overwhelm get stored? And how can we bring health to our overwhelmed nervous systems? And so I hope you enjoyed my next episodes about this. We will be tapping into the specificities around what I've discovered and 
the new facelift I'm giving to this world of entrepreneurs and individuals with diagnosed or undiagnosed ADHD, sensitives, empaths, energetically sensitive individuals, so that we can really start back tap into what I've found in my research around trauma and how we can start to unwield this story and this narrative around ADHD, how we can connect all of the pieces together so that you can truly quantum leap and really thrive and no longer have to feel this inner shame or needing to just survive. So with that said, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast, this episode. And if you need any support, please do reach out to me. I have my favorite tools that I see women be able to break free from these patterns and really start to love their life and also their business again. So with that said, all my love, all my light, we'll see you on the next episode. Hello, Awaken Beauty. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Were you inspired? Please leave a comment or your own personal aha moment so others can capture exactly what you did. Also, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you're interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness, including organic, CBD, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that is evokebeauty.com, E-V-O-Q beauty.com. And until next time, darling, stay sane, get sleep and bring your sexy back.